हेलो गाइस वेलकम लिटररी टर्म्स वन टुडे रेडी गाइस सो टुडे देयर इज नो कंफ्यूजन we are straight away going into the questions fresh to home first question to you what is amor kotwa it is is it translated as courtly love the term was coined by gaston paris theme of love explored in elizabethan poetry the idea of courtly love as explored in romeo and juliet and hamlet a group of 19th century poets in southern france <coughs> bolo what is amor kotwa it is courtly love term coined by gaston paris in 1883 to define the cult of love which emerged in literature celebrated in the poetry of the troubadours okay guys amour courtois is the uh, french term for courtly love hello everybody identify the type of wood based on the following statements sorry identify the type of wood based on the following statements here the stanzas or verse paragraphs are irregular in rhyme which is the type of word where stanzas or verse paragraphs are irregular in rhyme what kind of word is it it was popularized by one of the metaphysical poets in later years it was used by poets like dryden it is the irregular word Uh, pa 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 formulated by kauli and o abraham kauli so it is called kauli and ord the irregular ord created by propounded by abraham kauli horatian ord is not irregular it is homostrophic juvenalian ord is also very strict this is kauli and ord in Kauli and Ord was started by Abraham Kauli. Irregular Ord. Identify the form of fiction popularized by Theodore Hook through his works like Maxwell, Gilbert Gurney. Have you heard of this kind of novel? Which kind of novel was popularized by Theodore Hook? about wealthy fashionable members of the upper classes it is fashionable novel it is fashionable novel okay fashionable novel is a genre now which among the following themes works does not have the faustian theme which among these works does not have the faustian theme bolo a man selling his soul to the devil which of these is not faustian faust by goethe is faustian manfred the devil to pay the cenci by shelley is not faustian the cenci by shelley is not faustian it is a tragedy a domestic tragedy which among the following is not based on heroic drama it is written in epic style grand rhetorical declamatory 
it was largely influenced by french classical drama of corneille dryden's indian emperor conquest of granada aurangzeb are examples in later period richard sheridan perfected the genre through critic which of these is not true based on heroic drama bolo which of these is not based on heroic drama sheridan perfected the genre is wrong sheridan perfected the genre is wrong did you understand all these are features of heroic drama written by dryden mostly what is common about sally goodman in living in disguise this is a very contemporary uh what are these they are examples of heteronome if you don't know i will tell you characters of heteronome means what a creative alter ego a separate character and personality who produced poetry and prose will you please read extra about heteronome the term high comedy was introduced by dash in the work dash the term high comedy who introduced that is very important high comedy was introduced by george meredith in the idea of comedy high comedy was introduced by george meredith in the idea of comedy that is very important which among the following is not an example of juvenalian satire the vanity of human wishes london bartholomew fair gulliver's travels which of these is not juvenalian satires i will start online classes mostly in march coming march bartholomew fair is not juvenalian satire identify the mock heroic satirical verse style in octosyllabic couplets influenced by hudibras what is the mock heroic style influenced by hudibras it is hudibrastic verse hudibrastic verse juxtaposition and dramatic irony sandra is asking juxtaposition is when two characters or situations are put together parallel comparison kind of dramatic irony need not be like that dramatic irony is when a character does not know what is happening but the audience knows some incident will refer to something else you know for example oedipus a classic example of dramatic irony oedipus does not know what is happening but we know something already happened that is referred to in a later you know <coughs> incident for example he himself killed laius but he is now finding out the murderer of laius that is dramatic irony which among the following is true about humanism humanism this term have you heard which of these is true answer was it a short lived movement in poetry was it a branch of humanistic philosophy did they support symbolist poets answer is they are, it was a short lived movement pioneered by fernand greg in 1902 my youtube videos will be a lot but that is not enough you need to actually study properly and if possible do our quizzes also i don't think this is completely enough identify the figure of speech uh used in the following lines from part 1 of eliot's the wasteland one minute
One minute, guys. What is the highlighted text? I'll tell you. It is forgetful snow. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow. What is forgetful snow? Usually snow is not forgetful. People are forgetful. So, people, their epithet is transferred to snow. It is transferred epithet. Transferred epithet means an epithet applied to something is transferred to something else. Did you understand? An epithet uh, applied to something is transferred to something else. It is transferred epithet. Now, today, transferred epithet, a figure of speech in which the epithet is transferred from the appropriate norm to another. What is this called? Did you understand? A figure of speech in which an epithet is transferred from the appropriate noun to modify another to which it does not really belong. So that is transferred epithet. It is also known as, what is another term for transferred epithet? Transferred epithet is what? An epithet that is usually applied for something is transferred or moved to another thing. Instead of people, forgetful people, that epithet is taken and given to snow. That transferred epithet is also called hypelage. Are you able to follow? Transferred epithet means usually forgetful. Let me go back here. Forgetful is applied to people. Instead of that, that adjective is taken from people and given to snow. So from one noun, this epithet is transferred to another noun. Did you understand? When one, from one noun, it is transferred to another noun, it is called transferred epithet. Transferred epithet is also called hypelage. Is that clear everybody? It is now clear I hope. Which among the following is not true about the literature of escape? Have you heard of literature of escape? It emerged during the first and second world war. These are works about escaping from confinement, mostly from prisoner of war camps. H. E. Hervey's Caged Birds, Eric Williams's The Wooden Horse are famous examples. Ha, I will do on figures of speech. In a later period, the term began to denote the escapist tendency exhibited by individuals. In works like Wasteland. That is wrong. That is not literature of escape. Literature of escape is not about escapist tendency. It is about actual war situations. People escaping. Did you understand? This is wrong. People escaping from situations is not escape literature. Who among the following is not a Liverpool poet of the 1960s? Bolo. Who among the following is not a Liverpool poet of the 1960s? Who among the uh, Prerana was asking, transferred epithet and personification are very different. Personification is when you are giving personification to an inanimate thing. But transfer the epithet need not be about people at all. Tall sorrow you can say. Tall and sorrow. Tall tree like that. For example. It can be inanimate objects completely. Clear. Which are, who of the following is not a Liverpool poet? Exam answer is Gregory Corso. The others are Liverpool poets of the 1960s. Liverpool poets. Is it very small? You can't see? Okay, okay. I will do something. 
Give me one minute, I will solve it, okay? Just give me a minute. One minute, guys. Yes, done. Is it better now? Who coined the term magic realism? Do you know who coined the term magic realism? Sleepless pillow. Okay. Rahila, can you see? That is right, Ranjana. It is Franz Raw. Magic realism, the term was coined by Franz Raw. Yes, 100 years of solitude. Identify the literary device used in the highlighted text. One second, guys. What is the literary device in the phrase death in life? When you say death in life, what is the phrase? Is it irony? Transferred epithets, oxymoron or hyperbole. Is it irony, death in life? Is it irony, transferred epithet, oxymoron or hyperbole? Bolo. It is oxymoron. Death and life are opposites. Correct, guys. Death and life are opposites, but they are put together. It is oxymoron. Identify the concept introduced by Ruskin based on the following statements. Identify what is this? It was coined in 19, sorry, 1856. It was coined in 1856 to signify any representation of inanimate natural objects. What is it? Are you know. Ruskin coined it. What is it? Any representation of inanimate natural objects that ascribes to them human capabilities. Correct, Astika. Ruskin used the term in a derogatory manner. Correct, correct. It is pathetic fallacy. Very good. Pathetic fallacy. Representation of inanimate natural objects. Ruskin used it in a derogatory manner. Will you remember, guys? Anybody who has not joined our WhatsApp group, please, sorry, Telegram group, please WhatsApp me for Telegram link. Join the WhatsApp group and uh, take all the PDF from there. Okay, guys. Now, <clears throat> which among the following? is a type of rap or performance poetry that emerged on the West Coast during the 1980s. Which among the following is a type of rap or performance poetry? And uh, what uh, during the 1980s, what is the kind of uh, rap called? It is gangsta rap. Gangsta rap. That is why Rahila, I am also asking from new, new areas. Pathetic fallacy means whatever human emotions are there are attributed to trees, mountains, rain, etc. Trees are crying. That is pathetic fallacy. Human emotions are attributed to inanimate objects. Did you understand? Hi, Alice. Who are the Black Mountain Poets? Who are the Black Mountain Poets? Bolo. A group of African American poets. Is it right? A group of African American poets from Black Mountain College. Is it right? Also known as Projectivist Poets. All, they are also known as, I can put like this, you can still see, na? They were a group of mid-20th century American avant-garde poets. They were also called projectivist poets. This is right. Black mountain poets were also called projectivist poets. 
will you remember black mountain poets were also called projectivist poets then who among the following is not a black mountain poet definitely richard wright is not black mountain poet charles olson robert creeley robert duncan these are black mountain poets richard wright african american poet is not a black mountain poet okay guys pathetic fallacy is similar to personification but personification need not always be like pathetic fallacy personification need not be about emotions pathetic fallacy is only about emotions you know inanimate objects should have emotions only then it is pathetic fallacy but if you describe something as inanimate object as having wings clouds have wings that is personification it is not about any emotion black mountain poets is a group of poets they are also called projectivist poets they were they flourished in the mid 20th century america they were modernist avant garde poets from black mountain college did you understand now they included charles olson robert creeley robert duncan astiga it is not american boom it is latin american boom latin american boom means a flowering of writing in african Amer uh, latin american literature a flowering of writing in latin american literature in the second half of the 20th century now identify the i will make it bigger okay for you identify the type of drama popularized by the norwegian playwright the drama popularized by the norwegian playwright henrik ibsen mm, based on the following statements in a play the situation faced by the protagonist is put forward by the author as a representative instance you know it na you know it of course you are already answering solution to the problem will be at odd with popular opinion dekho what is the answer henry gibson popularized it it is problem play of course problem play means what problem play means the situation faced by the protagonist is representative of a contemporary social problem clear the situation is representative of a contemporary social problem then uh often the solution to the problem will be at odds with popular opinion it won't be the same as popular opinion it was later popularized by bernard shaw guys will you like the video everybody did you like the questions guys please like the video if you can, if you like it now so it is a uh, problem play okay guys then problem play the term was applied to uh, shakespeare's dark comedies problem play the term was applied to shakespeare's dark comedies uh, pgtrb uh, pgtrb pay, paid course i don't have you want me to start now many p and satire is a type of indirect satire also called what what is another term for many p and satire bolo tell me many p and satire is also called veronian satire many p and satire is also called veronian satire both are uh, say sa the same thing what is the difference horatian satire laughs at people juvenalian satire is angry with people menippian satire is about general attitudes not about actual people menippian satire is or veronian satire is about general attitudes not about real people okay so actually swift's satire is juvenalian 
UP PGT, TNP uh, PGT, so many exams. Why did Northrop Fry use the term anatomy as an alternative term to refer to Manipian satire? Why did Northrop Fry use the term anatomy? It's it is this kind of satire is often brutally criticized. It often brutally criticized the adversary. It was based on Burton's anatomy of melancholy. That is a, that is the answer. Northrop Fry called Manipian satire anatomy because Burton's anatomy of melancholy is its example. That is the answer. Will you remember guys? Northrop Fry uh, called Manipian satire anatomy because it is based on Burton's anatomy of melancholy. Yeah, I know. PG. Uh, let me see. I, 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 right now I am not having time. That is the problem. Karnataka assistant professor course is going on very, very well. HSA Kerala course is going on very well. In between, unacademy courses, that is why. I will try, okay? UP people and TN people. Next question. Which among the following is not true about cyberpunk? Which among the following is not true about cyberpunk? It emerged in the 1970s. It is a postmodern form of science fiction novel. Is that correct? It is correct. Postmodern form of science fiction. It is the electronic version of punk literature in the 1970s. That is not correct. That is not correct. The backdrop of the novels is partially or entirely virtual reality. Correct. G William Gibson's Neuromancer is a seminal work. Correct. So, this is not correct. Cyberpunk is electronic version of punk literature is not correct. Okay. Identify the type of drama that originated as a reaction to the immorality and comic or satiric representation of sexual licentiousness in restoration comedy. Once more. Identify the type of drama that originated as a reaction to restoration comedy. Remya or anybody who wants to join Karnataka Assistant Professor course, just WhatsApp me. You will automatically get the link. You just need to WhatsApp me. It is an amazing course. There is so, so, so much material and videos you have. Join immediately. Bolo. What is the drama that emerged as a reaction to restoration comedy? Of course, it is drama of sensibility. Restoration comedy is comedy of manners. Shweta, restoration comedy is comedy of manners. Against restoration comedy emerged drama of sensibility and emotion. Remya, I just posted my WhatsApp number. Once again, I am posting. 9037357688. 9037357688. Listen everybody, restoration comedy is comedy of manners or drama of manners. Reaction is drama of sensibility. Remya, I already posted, don't you see in the chat message. My WhatsApp number is 9037357688. Okay, guys. Next question. Yes, next question. Novel of sensibility of the second half of the 18th century is also known as Dash in America. For Gate, I have started a massive... Um, Quiz program with explanations. If you join any of our courses, this MA entrance you will pass. Listen, novel of sensibility is also known as Dash in America. It is also known as woman's fiction in America. 
novel of sensibility is also called women's fiction gate for gate i have an amazing um, quiz program it is not expensive if you want that also please whatsapp 9037357688 you will automatically get it then listen to this main thoda bada kar deti hu दो इंट्रोड्यूस बाय जेफरी चौसर इन ट्रॉयलस एंड क्रसीड द सेवन लाइन आई एम बिग पेंटामीटर स्टैंड राइमिंग ए बी ए बी बी सी सी पॉप्युलरली नोन एज राइम रॉयल गॉट इट्स नेम फ्रॉम विच किंग द ऑथर ऑफ किंग्स बुक गेट कोस इज नॉट एन अन अकेडमी इट इज इन माई टेस्ट it is king james the first of scotland king james the first of scotland is the author of king's book and uh, he wrote king's book or king is square and uh, he uh, gave the name rhyme royal to chaucerian stanza easy then which among the following poems is not written in the style of spenserian stanza Which among the following is not written in the style of Spenserian stanza? Is it Eve of Saint Agnes, Second Coming, Castle of Indolence, Adonai? It is the Second Coming. Eve of Saint Agnes, Castle of Indolence, and Adonai are all written in Spenserian stanza. Poems written in Spenserian stanza. Poems written in blank verse. Will you remember, everybody? Identify the device used in the following lines from P. B. Shelley's *The Sensitive Plant*. P. B. Shelley wrote *The Sensitive Plant*. Identify the device and the hyacinth purple, white and blue, which flung from its bells a sweet peal and you. Hyacinth flower is. creating the sound of bells it seems the flower is creating music it seems it felt like an odor within the sense the sound felt like odor it is a mixing up of the senses it is called synesthesia 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 means mixing up of the senses isn't it everybody synesthesia means instead of you know saying one sense only they will mix up senses it is synesthesia then identify the type of irony a structural device often seen in the work of uh, thomas hardy where a deity or fate is represented as though deliberately manipulating events the device by which a god is represented as deliberately manipulating events what is it called it is used in thomas hardy a god is represented as deliberately manipulating events what is it called yes in keats also there is synesthesia correct keats also employed synesthesia what is this called where a god is represented as manipulating events it is of course cosmic irony yes guys it is cosmic irony very good when god is represented as manipulating it is cosmic irony which of the following is an example of faction yes yes encyclopedia discount will be there for christmas uh, which of the following is an example of faction example of faction bolo it is norman mailers the armies of the night norman mailers the armies of the night what are faction writers faction writers mixed up fact and fiction faction writers mixed up fact and fiction guys do you know today i taught 11 hours can you believe that I taught eleven hours. Eleven, eleven. God is helping me. Wow. 
No, no, no. All of this is not faction. Proper faction is only armies of the night. Holograph means what? Holograph means what? Ha, Truman Capote and Norman Mailer wrote faction, correct. <laughs> Holograph means a document written in author's handwriting. A document written in author's handwriting. So many people need me. So I had to teach. From 10 to 12, sorry, from 10.30 to 12.30, roughly I taught Karnataka people as assistant professor. Then 1 to 2.30, Unacademy plus MCQ course on non-British literatures. European literature it was. Wonderful it was today. Then 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. I taught. Um, again, Unacademy plus. I taught today contemporary criticism, 20th century. We studied all the critics of the 20th century today. Then uh, yesterday also we did it. It was amazing today, the revision and questions, everything. Then uh, 5.30 to 9, I taught, 6 to 9 actually. I taught again Karnataka assistant professor. Then now 10 to uh, man, a holograph versus manuscript. Now, now I'm teaching you. <laughs> I am okay, I am okay. No, shoulder is better. I put some medicine. Holograph is a document written in author's handwriting. Manuscript is always the manuscript of a novel or poetry. Holograph need not be, it can be a letter. It can be other documents. Did you understand? Manuscript can be typewritten also. Manuscript can be typewritten and holograph can be letter also. It can. It need not be manuscript. It is mutually uh, inclusive. I mean, then Christopher Reed and Craig Rain. Have you heard of them? Which group of poets are they? Bolo, Christopher Reed and Craig Rain. You know what they did, guys? They pretended that they are Martians coming from Mars. They looked at things happening in, uh, uh, on earth and described them as if Martians are seeing this. Postcard, uh, Martian and a postcard from home or something. What is, what is it? Famous? Yes, Martian poets. Christopher Reed and Craig Rain are Martian poets. Will you remember now? Christopher Reed and Craig Rain are Martian poets. The term utopia derives from what language? The term utopia derives from what language? It is which language, Bolo? It is Greek language. The term utopia derives from Greek language. Okay. <clears throat> then, Ibid is a term seen in bibliographies. What does it mean, guys? A postcard from Mars or something. From Martian. Bolo. Ibid means, yes, many of you are saying correctly, in the same, actually Ibid is in the same work, I think. Ibid is in the same work. Ibid means
in the same source or in the same work ibidam or in the same place also it can be in the same place this is also correct but when you have work then use work you know both are correct when you have work then use work you know both are correct ajit prop theater is associated with dash ajit prop theater is associated with dash ajit prop theater associated with dash Russia agit prop means agitation and propaganda <clears throat> agit prop means agitation and propaganda did you understand agitation and propaganda political theater it is associated with russia the book theater and its double is associated with what the book theater and its double uh, safdar hashmi's nukkad yes nukkad uh, tv serial and natak also hmm book theater and its double is by antonin arthod associated with theater of cruelty <coughs> associated with theater of cruelty in poetry heaven is sometimes written as heaven 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 what is it called what is it an example of heaven heaven agitation and propaganda means it is about political rebellion it is about strike it is about um, you know uh, moving against the government themes like that agitation propaganda anjali i answered this before my youtube videos are useful for gate but i think they are not enough you can you should have a proper study of uh, everything and also you can join our quizzes if you want because in our gate quizzes i have explanations for all pdf please join our telegram group and if you whatsapp me you will get telegram link okay guys i am sending my whatsapp number Nine zero three seven three five seven six double eight. Guys, tell me it is syncope. Syncope. This is like elision. Okay, heaven or uh, is written like this. This is elision. Syncope. Wayne C. Booth coined which of these terms? Yes, if you join now, you will get all the videos from day one. For any course, it is like that. tell me it is he coined the term implied author and unreliable narrator wayne c booth coined the term implied author implied reader nahi implied author and unreliable narrator what did you not find you have to join the telegram group and you have to look at the files tab I will post in the group. I will explain. Don't worry. Today I will post. Wayne C. Booth, unreliable narrator. James Joyce's Ulysses is a dash of Homer's Odyssey. James Joyce's Ulysses is a dash of Homer's Odyssey. It is a travesty. Travesty means parody. Grammar ke topics. Oh, वो भी है ग्रेट गेट में द सेंसेशन नॉवल फ्लरिश्ड इन इंग्लैंड इन विच पीरियड द सेंसेशन नॉवल फ्लरिश्ड इन इंग्लैंड इन विच पीरियड बोलो इट इज एटीन सिक्सटीज द सेंसेशन नॉवल फ्लरिश्ड इन इंग्लैंड इन दिन सिक्सटीज द प्राग लिंग्विस्टिक सर्कल वॉज बेस्ड एट विच यूनिवर्सिटी इन प्राग the prague linguistic circle 
based at which university you won't believe this this is charles university charles university plurisignation is another term for what plurisignation pluri means many meanings are there it is ambiguity ambiguity or plurisignation that means many meanings are there did you understand everybody now an alexandrine has how many syllables in alexandrine how many syllables are there iambic hexameter is alexandrine so sorry 12 syllables are there i uh, alexander alexandrine is iambic hexameter so 12 syllables are there hexameter 6 into 2 12 syllables affective stylistics is the approach of dash affective stylistics is the approach of which of these critics it is stanley fish affective stylistics stanley fish talked about affective stylistics and interpretive communities gate syllabus you want in the video link okay okay i'll try affective stylistics stanley fish the alliterative revival happened in which century bolo uh silambu selvan if you whatsapp me i will give you my literary criticism course literary criticism course hai mera you can just buy it you will get lots of videos and pdf Just WhatsApp me. A literative revival happened in fourteenth century. Fourteenth century. Okay, then Theophil Gautier's Mamsle de Mopin illustrates the idea of dash. Theophil Gautier's Mamsle de Mopin illustrates what idea? it is a very important text of aesthetic movement and illustrates the idea of la art pour la art mamsle de mopin illustrates the idea of la art pour la art or art for art sake la art pour la art means art for art sake art for art sake the term cultural poetics is associated with dash the term cultural poetics is associated with new historicism new historicism is also called cultural poetics by stephen greenblatt new historicism is also called cultural poetics by stephen greenblatt who of the following is not associated with the concept of dialectic socrates introduced dialectic plato also did it hegel also did it longinus is not involved with dialectic longinus is not involved with dialectic theek hai guys and the 50th question which of the following is not a kunstler roman what do you mean by kunstler roman guys kunstler roman means novel about the development of an artist Dear friends will you please like the video will you please like the video everybody which of the following is not a kunstler roman definitely david copperfield is kunstler roman aurora le is about a poet it is kunstler roman and ben okri's landscapes within also amy tan is the answer Amy Tan's Bone People is not Kunstler Roman. It is about Maori people. Fifty questions over. Now fifteen more questions are there. Which of the following terms originated from the Greek meaning Greek word meaning to lead? Which of the following terms originated from the Greek word meaning to lead? To lead. It means. hegemony to lead means hegemony is the word hegemony is from the greek word to lead you are all a lost generation it is the epigraph of 
you are all a lost generation it is the epigraph of everybody might know it is the sun also rises the sun also rises by hemingway you are all a lost generation who of the following pioneered free indirect discourse who of the following wrote in free indirect discourse that is actual dialogue is not given dialogue is just written like the like text who used that technique famously dialogue is not given as dialogue it is just written as text it is jane austen who used free indirect discourse jane austen used free indirect discourse did you like the questions everybody i hope you liked the questions did you like the video everybody thank you for liking the video explication is another term for what explication is another term for what explication detext it is another word for close reading it is an lost generation are writers like uh, f scott fitzgerald ernest hemingway etc who were prominent between the two world wars after the first world war they lost all their opportunities they didn't have a proper direction they were like lost gertrude stein called them lost generation did you understand everybody my number i have given already please take down whatsapp me for all the links 9037357688 please join the telegram group and uh, ex explication ruchi kumari explication means reading only the text no, no, not looking at anything outside it reading the text and explaining it reading only the text and explaining it that is called explication it is like it is the french term for close reading got it i just explained now the homeric simile is associated with what homeric simile is also as is associated with which of these bolo it is associated with milton's grand style homeric simile miltonic simile epic simile they are all the same homeric simile miltonic simile epic simile all the same now next question who among these writers has been praised for a direct sensuous apprehension of thought who among these writers has been praised for uh, what is equal to new ah close reading and explication are related to new criticism and ontological criticism correct correct hai ye bolo direct sensuous apprehension of thought it is john dunn john dunn is praised for direct sensuous apprehension of thought will you remember guys then a person with a low ranking in a social political or other hierarchy is called what structuralism is different ruchi kumari structuralism is not explication it is different structuralism actually looks only at the context structuralism is the opposite of explication a person with a low ranking in a social political and other hierarchy is called what subaltern a person with a low ranking is called subaltern life is but a walk talking nahi sorry walking life is but a walking shadow what is it example of which figure of speech is it life is but a walking shadow what is it nahi nahi bourgeoisie is not right life is but a walking shadow is a metaphor metaphor then 
A lie has no legs. What is it? A lie has no legs. I would say it is personification. A lie has no legs is personification. Love is blind. What is it? It is not personification because no body parts are mentioned. Now I would say it is metaphor. It is metaphor. How happy is he here? What is it? How happy is he here? How happy is he here? That is right guys. It is indeed alliteration. Ha 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 sound. Repeated. Hena. I loved Ophelia. 40,000 brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up the sum. Who said Hamlet? It is hyperbole. 40,000 brothers it seems. Hyperbole, exaggeration. This is hyperbole or exaggeration. 40,000 brothers could not with all their love make up the sum. So much he loved it seems. What is meant by synecdoche? A part of something used to signify the whole. A whole of something used to signify a part. A, a, a human object endowed with human feelings. An in, a a non-human object, sorry. A non-human object endowed with human feelings. Both A and B. Which of these is right? Uh, Astika, I said love is blind is a metaphor because blindness is used as metaphorically there. Blindness is metaphorically used there. It will be personification only if you say love's uh, so body parts are there. It is, it, it is actually both personification and metaphor. It is better to look at it as metaphor, I think. Blindness is used metaphorically there. Did you understand? Ye bolo. It is both A and B. Synecdoche is a part signifying whole or whole signifying part. Six hands worked in the field instead of three people. So part is signifying whole. You can say India won the match. Their whole is signifying part. Both A and B is correct. Did you understand everybody? What is the term used to denote the use of one term to mean another? Instead of king, you use crown. You use one term with another with which it has become closely associated. What is that called? A term which is used to denote something closely associated with it. Of course, it is metonymy. Correct. It is metonymy. Did you en enjoy this quiz, guys? Was it like... Was it lovely? Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so grateful to you and I love you all. I will keep on giving quest quizzes like this. Cupid is blind is nothing because Cupid is human being. Cupid is blind. Ah, that is also metaphor because blindness is metaphorical. Yeah. But, but if Cupid is physically blind, then it is not a figure of speech at all. <laughs> okay. So, thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Have a blessed night. Please WhatsApp me and join the Telegram group and uh, take the PDF. Okay. I will send it in a few, uh, in a short while. Okay, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.